So welcome back to the third session of today's live online English classes. And so Gedin Sagila has already discussed with you the different verb forms. So I'm going to continue with that. Uh, so I'm going to play a video here and I want you to uh, look at all the verbs that you will see uh, when the story is being played in the video. And the story that I'm going to read today is about a little girl called Thumbelina. And this is a level 3 book. Once upon a time, there was a woman who had no children. What the woman really wanted was a little girl. One day, an old woman came to see her. Plant this seed, said the old woman. Soon you will have a little girl. So the woman planted the seed, and very soon there was a flower. When the flower opened, out came a little girl. The woman took the little girl into her home. You are as little as my thumb, said the woman. So I shall call you Thumbelina. The woman looked after Thumbelina, and Thumbelina was happy. One day, a toad saw Thumbelina playing. What a pretty little girl, said the toad. I shall take her home with me. She will marry my son. So, the toad hopped up to Thumbelina and took her away to the pond. She left Thumbelina on a lily leaf and went to look for her son. But Thumbelina wasn't very happy. See, she's crying. She didn't want to marry a toad. She wanted to be back home with her mother. See, poor girl. Just then, a butterfly flew by. Please help me, said Thumbelina. The toad wants me to marry her son, but I don't want to. I want to go home. The butterfly flew down to the lily leaf. Thumbelina jumped onto the butterfly's back and they flew to a wood. Thumbelina was very happy in the wood. She stayed there all summer. But when winter came, all the butterflies flew away. Thumbelina was all alone. A mouse came by. Please help me, said Thumbelina. I'm cold and I don't have a home, the mouse said. Come and live with me. The winter was very long and very cold. Soon there will be no more food for you, said the mouse. The old mole has food. He is coming to see us today. Why don't you marry him? But Thumbelina wasn't very happy. She didn't want to marry the old mole and she didn't want to live down in a dark tunnel. When the mole came, he said, Come and see my little home in the tunnel. You will be happy there. So Thumbelina went to see the old mole's home. In the mole's tunnel, Thumbelina saw a swallow who was hurt. All of my friends flew away when winter came, said the swallow. I'm all alone. Thumbelina looked after the swallow all winter. When summer came, the swallow was better and he flew away to be with his friends. Once more, Thumbelina was left alone. Soon it will be winter again. I will have to marry the old mole and live down in his dark tunnel. Just then, Thumbelina's swallow flew down to her. Come with me, he said. I will take you to the land of summer. So Thumbelina jumped onto the swallow's back and they flew away. 
The land of summer was full of flowers. In each of the flowers lived a little boy or girl, just like Thumbelina. Come and live with us, they said. They took Thumbelina to see their prince. The prince said, "Will you marry me, Thumbelina?" And Thumbelina said, "Yes." So Thumbelina and the prince lived happily ever after. So, all right. So, you might have noticed in the whole story that there are so many verbs, and and that is why it is said the verbs are the heart of a sentence. So Gidin Stargela already mentioned that there is no sentence without a verb. So I just wanted you to know that we come across so many verbs when we read something or when we write. So therefore, it is very important that we understand the different verb forms. So let us review the story. So I have few extract taken from the story. So the first one here: Once upon a time, there was a woman who had no children. What the woman really wanted was a girl. So I want you to focus here. Once upon a time, there was a woman. So was. So what does this show? What does this word or verb show? There was a woman who had no children. How about if we change was into is? The meaning of the story, the sentence changes. That's why verbs are very important. It shows that this is something that happened in the past. So once upon a time there was a woman who had no children. What the woman really wanted was a girl. So again here wanted. This is the past form. Again wanted. What the woman really wanted. So the base form of the verb want and then the ed wanted the past was a little girl. Again here I want to draw your attention was a little girl. So in case. If I write uh, wanted were, then we have to change this a little girl. So this also suggests how verbs function. So this was tells that the number of the girl is just one. What the uh, woman really wanted was a little girl. If we uh, or if we say if the sentence is written in another way, what the woman really wanted, so two girls. Then we can't write was here. It should be were. So uh, this thing also you need to be careful about. Okay. And then one day an old woman came to see her. So again here came. This is the past tense form of this verb. The verb that shows that something happened in the past. One day an old woman came to see her. Plant the seed," said the old woman. "said again this verb. Soon you will have a little girl. Now here, soon you will have a little girl. Now this shows something else. So will that shows about something that is going to happen in future. Soon you will have a little girl. So the woman planted the seed again. Planted. This is again a verb. In its past tense uh, form, and very soon there was a flower. Now here, the subject is flower. Was a flower. In case if it's flowers, so we cannot write was here. We should write were. There were flowers. So when the flower opened, out came a little girl. So I have highlighted all the verbs here. The woman took the little girl into her home. Took. This is the past tense, the second form of the verb take. You are as little as my thumb. Now you are. How about uh, like if we change the sentence instead of uh, you are, if we add she here. So what should we write? She can we write R after she? Of course not, because she is a singular subject, and so the verb that follows should be singular. So she is. It should be she is. But then you is also singular. But this is an exception. 
I am, you are, she is, he is. So you are as little as my thumb, said the woman. So I shall call you Thumbelina. Again here, I shall call. This is an indication that something is going to happen in future. The woman looked after Thumbelina and Thumbelina was happy. The woman looked. Again, this verb shows the time when this is happening. And Thumbelina was happy. So these are all in the past tense form. So I'm not going to go in detail uh, the whole story, but this is just to help you get an idea how we learn about all these verbs uh, in our daily reading, in our textbooks also, in your textbook lessons, we come, come across all these verbs. So this is how you can contextualize what you learn. Because verbs not as a separate thing, but they're all together, they're all integrated. So, so in the, uh, the story or the extract, you have noticed so many verbs. I have uh, brought some of, I've listed some of the verbs here. So want, plant, appear, look, and close. Close is actually not in the story, but I just uh, listed it here for a reason. So what I want you to know is, like see, want, want it. The second form of verb, the sim simple past and the past participle. Want, want it, want it. Plant, planted, planted. Appear, appeared, appeared. Look, looked, looked. Close, closed closed. So these are regular verbs. So I have listed or taken out all those of some, uh, some of the regular verbs from the story just to help you understand that verbs can be either regular or irregular. So regular verb, so they create the simple past and the past participle by adding, so there's a, a sort of a specific pattern. So they add like the, the past tense or the past participle are, is formed by either adding D or ED and uh, at the end of the base form of the verb. So we need to remember this. In the, if the verb ends in E, we simply add D. We don't add ED. It is already there. So for example, if the base form, is, base form of the verb is dance, the past simple or the simple past tense is danced. And the past participle is danced. Here we are adding just D and not ED. So if the verb ends in a consonant and Y, we change the Y to I and add ED. So this is how it's done. For example, if the base form is carry, it, the past simple tense is carried, the past participle is carried, so we change the I or we replace the Y, sorry, with I and then we add ED, carried, study, studied, worry, worried. So this is how we need to remember when we change the form of the verb or the tense. So irregular verbs, so I have a list of irregular verbs. The name itself suggests irregular verbs. So they are irregular. They do not form uh, or follow a specific pattern. So I have a list of irregular verbs here. So you have the B form of verb, uh, which changes into was or were. So B form of verb, so you might be like confused, like it's, uh, M is it so they are like was war so they are the tense so B form of verb is like I am doing this he is doing this she is doing this so B form B means here there are certain examples I'm just giving you two here M and is here so mm, was were and then the past participle is been and then go went gone Come, came, come, take, took, taken, say, said, said, give, give, given. So you might have noticed they don't follow a regular pattern like the regular verbs. So uh, in the regular verbs, so they follow a specific pattern by adding D or ED. But in case of irregular verbs, there's no specific pattern. So what we need to do is only memorize. So, but then 
if we group them, then it becomes easier for us to memorize or remember. So let me just tell you. So the irregular verbs do not follow a regular pattern. And there are four types of irregular verbs. So if you just remember this, it becomes easier for you to kind of remember, oh, irregular verbs come in this, this, this form. So the first type is the same base form, same simple past tense and past participle. So irregular verbs sometimes have all the three form of verb in the same way, like that they are same. And then the second group is same base form and past participle. So the first and the third form of the verb is same. And the third group is same past simple and past participle. So where the second form of verb and the third form of verb are same. And we have a group of like irregular verbs where the base form, the simple past and past participle all are different. Let me show you. Just look at this, the example of the four types. So if you just uh, segregate the irregular verbs into these four groups, it becomes easier for you to remember. So the first one is where the base form, the past simple, and the past participle are all same. For example, cut, cut, cut. The present tense is cut, the past tense is also cut, and the past participle is also cut. Put, put, put. So this is one group. And the second group is where the uh, first form, the base form, and the third form, that is the past participle, they are same. Come, came, come. Run, ran, run. So you can see the first form, that is the base form, and the past participle are same. And then we have the third group. So you might be wondering how this is uh, different because uh, you can see the same spelling, right? R-E-A-D, R-E-A-D, and then R-E-A-D. But then you need to remember, the way this word is pronounced differs. The first one, the, the base form, when the verb is read, we need to pronounce it as read. But then when it becomes the past tense, the spelling is same, R-E-A-D, but we have to read it as read and not read. I'm repeating, when the verb read read takes its second form that is the past tense the pronunciation changes we cannot re pronounce it as read but read 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 the third form is also read that's why this is put into the third category where the past simple tense or the simple past tense and the past participles they are same and then we have teach taught taught do okay the fourth one where all the three form of verb, it's different. Do, did, done. Write, wrote, written. Now let me give you an example of how this is uh, used. Uh, let me first take the example of the word read. Mm. We read stories, okay? We read stories. We read a story yesterday. Okay, so here the read is, we read stories. This is the first form of verb. First form of verb. First form means the present. Then we have or the base form, or we also call this as infinitive. So we read a story yesterday. So this shows the time. This happened in the past. Yesterday, we read a story. Or you can say, uh, he read, or I read a story. So we can change the, the uh, subject here a story yesterday, and then uh, the past participle. So, we have read a story. So, I'm using the perfect tense here, a story. We have read a story yesterday. So, the past participle sometimes can act as a passive voice also. Uh, a 
story was read by us. So this is the third form of verb here. This is just to help you get an understanding about uh, how irregular verbs can work. Uh, they can sometime wo sometimes work as an adjective as well. And the perfect uh, tense or the passive uh, helps in the passive formation of passive voices as well. So you are already aware of because the students of class 5 and 6, you all know about the verb tenses, the past, the present, and the future. So the three main categories is like are the past tense, the present tense, and the future tense. This shows about the time, so the verb tenses. So these are the main category in which the verb tenses are divided. And then you have subparts. So the past tense, the uh, verb tense, like the verb tenses, past, present, and future. The past tense is further divided into four. The present tense is other, further divided into four more, and then future. So that makes a whole of twelve. So we'll not go into detail, keeping time into account. But I'll just help you uh, get an idea about, or those who have already learned, review the verb tenses the past, present, and future. So in the past uh, tense, we have past simple, or we call simple past, past continuous, or you can also say past progressive, perfect, this past perfect, and past perfect continuous. So that makes a list of four types of, uh, four verb tenses here. And then you have the se present, simple present, present continuous, perfect continuous present perfect continuous, and then we have the future, future simple, future continuous tense, future perfect tense, and future perfect continuous. So this, in all, we have 12 verb tenses. We need to remember this. And uh, these verb tenses are used accordingly, uh, looking at what you are going to explain, what you want to say. If you are going to tell about something that is going to happen in future, you are going to use the future tense. If you are narrating something that happened in the past, you have to use the past tense. So this is how you have to make use of the proper tense. Otherwise, uh, the person who is reading your write-up or whoever is listening to you speak will get confused. So therefore, this becomes very, very important. So. Finally, what I want uh, you to do is look at the verb tenses here. So I have taken this from the story itself. One day an old woman came to see her. This is taken from the story. So let us work on this. One day, an old woman came to see her. Now, this is a sentence from the story. One day, an old woman came to. Okay. One day, an old woman came to see her. Now, this is taken from the story of Thumbelina. Now, if we have to change this. So this sentence suggested, suggests that this is something that happened in the past. Now if, I, if we want to change it into something that, hap, that is happening now or that is happening in the present, we have to change the verb here. Let's see how we can do this. Or we will just uh, remove this part. I'm going to take only this portion. An old, an old woman, now came is the past tense. So we have to use the present tense. So the base form of the verb came is come. Okay. Now, please pay attention here. Okay. A 
and all women come to see her. So you might w think that, okay, since this is the first form of the verb came, come. So we can write come. But in case we write, and all women come to see her, your sentence becomes wrong because the subject here is an old woman. This is the subject. The subject here is an old woman. And the verb come here, since the subject is singular, an old woman, this is just one woman, an old woman. The subject is singular, so the verb has to be singular. So please remember, this verb come is not a singular verb, but a plural verb. So how can we make this verb into singular? We will add s, comes, right? And all women comes to see her. Then your sentence is right. So we have to be very careful, not just about the tense, but then subject and verb concord or agreement. Your subject should, or your verb should agree with the subject. So an old woman comes to see her. I hope you will keep this in your mind. Then, um, okay, now this becomes your present. This is something that happened in the past. So this is present. And now we are going to change this sentence again, making it into a future tense sentence. So, an old, an old woman will come to see her. An old woman will come will come to see her. Now this is future tense. This shows about something that is happening in future. An old woman will come to see her, the lady. So an old woman will. So this one shows that this is something that is going to happen in the future. An old woman will come. Now you might be wondering, thinking, how come again here, an old woman is just one. But we are not writing S here. We are using C-O-M-E. But then after will, we cannot write this. An old woman will come to see uh, her is wrong. You, ha you may have uh, you never seen such sentence where it's written, an old woman will come to see her. Will comes is wrong. An old woman will come to see her. Now, this will can be used for a plural subject as well. We will come. They will come. Many women will come. So the same uh, the word will can be used here. This is the future tense of the uh, sentence here. So you can see how important, uh, how important role a verb plays in a sentence. We can change the meaning of the sentence by changing the verb. And that is why verbs are called the heart of the sentence. It's very important. So we change the meaning or the tense of the sentence by changing the verb, the verb tenses. So what I want you to uh, do as an assignment is, I uh, look at the slide, oh, sorry. Uh, you try to rewrite this sentence into its present and future tense, the final one. The woman took the little girl into her home. This is a simple assignment I'm giving you. The woman took the little girl into her home. So the verb here is took, and this is which tense you need to identify, whether it's a, uh, you, it's very clear actually, it's past tense, but what you need to do is you have to rewrite these sentences so that you have a sentence in present tense as well as future tense. So I'll see you again in the, my next session uh, that will be at 2.15 after lunch. And the session will be specifically for the students of classes 7 and 8. Uh, like this one was specifically for the students of classes 5 and 6. The second session would be for students of classes 7 and 8. And I will be discussing verb tenses. Thank you.